Let's handle hidden nodes, hidden connections and locked patches. In my previous tutorial, I already showed you how to hide or show inlets and outlets. Now I will show you how to hide nodes and lock a patch. Well, we first need a patch. Let's make a cool running sinus wave with little stars. We're gonna make a renderer and we put it inside our patch. So I hit Alt 2. Let's make it nice and big. I'm going to use a pillow this time. Pillow is just like a quad, but only with cool faded edges. So we go for the pillow. Connect it to the renderer. And we also need a transform, of course. We go for the transform 2D. The sinus wave we're going to make is just a line with these pillows. And they're evenly distributed along the x-axis. To do that, we need a shape generator that can place my little stars on a line. The node that does this is the linear spread. Linear spread. And we're going to connect this to the translate X pin of the transform node. Let's scale down this pillow. I make an IO box and I right click this time and then I connect it to the scale X and the scale I pin. I could also just two times left click, 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 but this just saved me a little time. Okay, let's make the size, I don't know, 0.25 or something. Rotate it a bit, rotate something like this. And I think I also turn down the fade amount all the way down to zero. Now I got a nice little star. Okay, ready for some magic? Let's increase the spread count of linear spread. And boom, I got seven stars. To fill the entire renderer, Let's make the width to 2. Perhaps a bit more, I don't know. Uh, this looks nice. Okay, now for the sinus wave. I'm going to use a circular spread to make these stars move up and down. Make a circular spread. And I connect the eye output to translate eye. The circular spread is actually making two spreads. One for the X and one for the eye. But we only use one this time. Now let's change the spread count also to 7. We should see a little wave. Let's make an I.O. box for the spread count, so we can change them both in one go. Right click, left click, left click, right click. Let's make this 7. Let's align these nodes to clean up some mess. Just left click and drag, and hit Ctrl L. We also want to make an I.O. box for the factor pin. And if we change this, we can change the shape of the wave. Let's make another I.O. box for the height of this wave. Connect it to the height pin of the circular spread. Let's set this value to 2. So we use the maximum height of the renderer. Let's add a little motion by creating an LFO node. Oh. And connect that to the face. I think this is a bit fast now, so let's make another I.O. box. And connect it to the period pin of the LFO. It is now zero and that is so fast you cannot even see it. But let's make this to, I don't know, eight. And here we have some waving stars. How cool is that? Uh, some of the glitches you might see in the video is just me editing the video. But this tutorial was about hitting nodes and locking patches. A locked patch means that you cannot do anything with the patch except change the I.O. boxes. The shortcut for this is Ctrl E as you can see here in the menu. So let's lock this patch. I locked the patch and now I cannot do anything. You see, I cannot move anything around. I can click, drag, try whatever I want to. Creating a new node, it doesn't work. All I can do is right click on these IO boxes and change some values. A locked patch is an easy way to let other people play with your patches. It is not the best way, but in a hurry it might work just as well. Also, if I make an inspector, it doesn't do anything anymore. An indication that you have locked your patch is here. It's this hash sign. Now the patch is locked, there is really no use for us or the users to see all these nodes. So let me show you how to hide these. First unlock the patch, I press Ctrl E on my keyboard. And the hash sign is gone, so we unlocked the patch. We're going to move all our control boxes to the top of the patch. 
and perhaps made, make an inspector to increase the font size. Let's control E, control T, to let it stay on top. I select them all, and I change the size of the font to something a bit bigger, let's say 20, and then I scale them all up. and do some nice rearranging. Now, if I was doing this right, I would have given all the nodes a descriptive name. So you can see what IO box does what, but for this tutorial, I'll skip that. And let's continue with hiding these nodes. I close the inspector with control W. Now we are going to select all the nodes and connections we want to hide. We don't want to hide the I.O. boxes and we also do not want to hide the renderer. So I left click and drag and I have selected all the nodes and connections I wanted to hide. I press Ctrl H for hide and you will see that the nodes are now light grey. The light grey indicates that these nodes will be hidden if you lock a patch. You might have seen these light grey nodes before and now you know what they are for. To unhide a node, just select one or a group and press Ctrl H again. But I want this one also hidden so I press Ctrl H. If we now lock our patch with Ctrl E, you see all the nodes are gone and I'm only left with some IO boxes and a renderer. So, I have now made a nice little clean patch to control this sinus wave. I can change the spread count. I can change the width. This method is not designed as a fully functional replacement for a graphical user interface. All my keyboard shortcuts still work. For example, to unlock it, Ctrl E. I press Ctrl E again. And my middle mouse button also still works, but then again, if you are the only one that operates this patch, it is way safer and easier for you.